it is good <coughs> even uh, as far as from Kapo people have come I'm so happy to see even the president of Bodh Dharma Society, Mr. So is also there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, even uh, yesterday, somebody came to Centur. He told me, Bantia, I want to go to BGF to listen to you. But uh, yeah, anyway, that I can get a brief on the talk that you are going to give. I said it will be brief only at the center. <laughs> okay, then I'm waiting for the, on YouTube to visit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we talk about uh, maybe you uh, are expecting me to talk about quite critical of the AFC of McDonald. <laughs> I'm not planning such a talk. After all, you see the KFC stands for Kentucky Fried, Fried Chicken and M for McDonald. These are giant corporations in the world that are doing a magnificent service the world, the community, they are getting involved in charity works and social activities and providing a lot of relief to the people who are busy in day-to-day -day life, the family life. Especially some ladies, they are very happy because we can just walk into and grab something so that I don't need to prepare dinner or lunch. <laughs> So it's a kind of relief, so all over the world, people have a quite a positive look at it. No harm, because those corporations, they are trying to meet the need of the people, need of the society, and uh, they are trying to cater to the need of the society in general. So there is no harm. We are not going to criticize that you don't have to eat McDonald's or you don't have to eat KFC. All these giant corporations, they are trying their best to give the best healthy food and nutritious food. And in time, even now, we also can walk into that because they are also serving vegetarian. <laughs> so, so it's good. <coughs> But as <coughs> Buddha said always also, in uh, moderation, everything in moderation. I saw a, a paper in, and I don't know where I saw because during my travel I see somewhere I saw somebody who was telling that I have eaten, been eating for the last 14 years, three hamburger per day, the hamburgers per day, 14 years, and it doesn't, it hasn't done anything bad to me. So he's happy about it. Definitely he must have, <laughs> so at least uh, 20, 30 cows during 14 years. <laughs> so there's no harm in that. Because these corporations are also trying their best to help the people. So as those are the giant corporations that they get involved in different activities to help the people, help the society, help the economy, help the mass. It's good. But as Buddha said, it's good to consume anything in moderation, a lot of uh, concerns about the high calorie in the food, high sodium in the food. Well, <clears throat> because of that, we are not going to tell people to avoid a boy, but no, it's up to the people. Whether you like it or not, you're not sure. So it's, you have the choice. 
I met a young boy in Boston. He said that <clears throat> uh, I was just having a chat with him. So he grabbed a can of coke from his pocket somewhere and he rang. He said that uh, that's all I have at this time, so if you don't mind, I would like to drink this. I said, go ahead. He said, you like it? Yes. I drink 14 cans of Coke every day. 14 cans. I told him, oh, who buys? My parents. So you like it? Yes. I did not want to because uh, discourage him because it is the responsibility of the parents and I should not have jumped into that and tell him not to do that. So those are the things that it is up to us to decide what to consume, what to throw, what to give up. So everything in moderation is good. And <clears throat> Now, when we are talking about this KFC, um, we are not talking about food or anything. But we are talking what in Buddhism is presented. The four nutrients in Buddhism, and those are the causes for sickness. That comes as like this. K is the karma. One of the four nutrients. <coughs> and karma is of course in general we know karma. But how the karma comes into play in our life, in our rebirth, in our day-to-day -day life, the long journey of sansara, and providing us comfort and discomfort, all this, how karma is playing a role in that. When people in the West, <laughs> when they hear about, heard about the karma, they are a little bit reluctant to accept immediately because that shatters the very foundation of their belief. Because Western society or European society was <coughs> in the opinion of that there is a creator who decides our fate, who decides everything what is around us, whether it's environmental, society or family, everything is in the hands of the Creator. But later, uh, like scientists, like uh, Huxley, Julian Huxley, who is sometimes back, the other people, you know, they try to shatter the very foundation of the Western society saying that they cannot accept or believe that there is somebody behind this, our movements, our society, our whole life, that there is somebody who is moving, doing something. They were reluctant to believe that and they tried to find this, the findings, research, scientific research to show that there isn't anybody who is doing something to shape our life, is trying to do something to change our life, but it is in the hands of all, each and every individual. And they then try to approach those 
teaching the theory of karma. But they were still reluctant to accept because always question, question. Rabindran's teaching was always open to question. That is what is the uniqueness of Buddha's teaching. Come and see, come and investigate. Hey, hey, possible. This is why it is very important with this teaching. Give the freedom of choice, freedom of uh, choosing what you like, what you don't. And all those things, when they come to, they compare what the science has to offer, what the Buddha has to offer. But then they found that the Buddha's teaching surpasses the findings of the so-called modern science. The Kama theory is so unique. How Kama is playing a vital role in deciding things in our life today and tomorrow. When we become sick, how Kama is playing a role. When we are going for another life, how Kama is playing a role. So these are things they simply didn't want to accept, but they tried to investigate how this happened, how this happened. Sometimes they say it is something to do with the nature. But then again they try to see that the nature alone cannot be sight. So there is something to do with this teaching, to investigate. So karma is the one thing that out of four nutrients, the karma, how karma can cause us sicknesses. How it plays a role. Recently a, a scientist, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Things, uh, Carter, if I remember well, he's trying to, he has been doing research for many, many, many years with other scientists, psychologists. He's trying to find something and he came up with that saying, one boy who was born without three fingers, and they're trying to find how this happened and went to his previous life and everything. They had great research and they came to conclusion at the time when he was dying, he met with an accident. At that accident, he was dying with the knowledge that he find that he has lost three fingers in the accident and he was born again and the missing three fingers. So these are things, kind of this kind of things. Now he's trying to say how this happened. At the last moment, he was thinking, he was pain, at the same time he was dying and he's seeing his fingers, he's somewhere under the truck or car with the, after the accident and he's dying, he's looking at three fingers, missing three fingers and he's concentrating on that and he was born next life without three fingers. So the relations between this life and the next life, for us simply we can say that it is how this happened. But it's lots of research, lot of research have been doing hundreds of cases. So the last will that also proves what the Buddha said also when we are done. The five things we cannot say about the death, but one is the last thought that appears, that comes into your mind. That will be the deciding factor.
So there, when you have a thought, that will be the deciding factor for your next life. And here, this person, the scientist, he proved the last thought he was read was that he's worrying, he's crying of his losing fingers, three fingers. And with that, he was dying. And with, as a result of that, he was born with three missing fingers. So karma is a theory, something that is beyond the grasp of ordinary people. It's something that we generally cannot analyze. We cannot say that this is because of the karma, what, how karma works. It's something, a miracle, something magic, something that we will not be easily able to explain how karma works. So that's why in the Buddha shows how the karma causes us sickness, how we will play in our daily life, progress, failure, happiness, misery, myself, all these things, how the karma is playing a role in our daily life. So these are the scientists now who are doing the best to explain, expose certain things to prove what the Buddha said 2,500 years ago. How we have to face a situation like that to avoid unnecessary and terrible incidents. So come is playing a vital role in our health and it is one of the four things causes our bad health sicknesses. So that's why Buddha has said to be mindful. To be mindful means Whatever we talk, whatever we do, whatever we think, if we do it mindfully, if we are aware of it, then we can avoid so many miserable conditions, miserable future, and bad health too. There's a thought. That's the food for our life, not physical food, but it's a food for mind. Good talks, friendly attitude, smile, modesty, all these simple qualities, these are the foods for our mind. If we do not feed proper way, then it will produce a great miserable results. Like physically, in a form of food material when we take, if you are aware of what we are eating, if you are aware of what we put it in our mouth, then of course, if you are doing everything in moderation, we can avoid lots of sicknesses. Then instead, we have to be aware of the food that we fail to give to our mind. The food that we give to our mind is a number of qualities of kindness, friendliness, gentleness, calmness, these are the things that we need to put into our mind. And that will shape our life, that will try, to, that will avoid the unnecessary sickness. And it is easy. 
is not that difficult. One important thing is to be mindful. We always talk about mindful, mindful, mindful. But we do not need to take those things very or it's hard. It's difficult. Now, don't go deep into the mindfulness. What is it? What are the ramifications of mindfulness? How we can develop it? Why should I do that? I have no time to be mindful. No, simply forget those difficult part. Simply try to be a normal person. Don't be angry. Don't criticize others. Don't look at others with bad thoughts, angry, but simply wear a smile. Look at others, they smile. That is a great source of food for your mind. And that will change slowly your attitude. Your attitude. And that will shape your, also your physical body. Because when you smile, when you have positive thoughts, that will secrete into your blood a kind of hormone. We call adrenaline. When those <clears throat> hormone gets into your body, it travels fast in no time across your body. That will change the normal functions of your physical body. That can be seen on your face. When we are angry, we can see the anger on your face. How it happens? Anger, when we are angry, immediately we can see that your face goes dark. And no smile. If somebody notices it, is frightened to see the face. Why? Because when that anger is called nerve, when it comes to mind, it changes just the normal functioning of your physical body. And that is carried out throughout your body, through the vessels. And these things happen in a second, so fast. When it travels in your body through the veins, that can be seen on your face. If it is bad, angry, because that changes the normal function. Your body is normal, you are staying there. But something came to your mind, anger. That changes the normal functioning. And then we can see, oh, he looks very angry. Frightened to see. That is how things happen. And damage is done. But the same way, when it travels, when you're happy, when you're happy mood, that also there's something secretes into blood that's carried out throughout your vessel in no time. That can be seen on your face, a pleasant look. See the two different thoughts, two different thoughts, two different personalities. When anger, you don't like to see his face. But same person in a minute, it's happy. It changes your physical body face. You like to see that thing. This is what's happening. And those are very harmful. If it's bad, harmful. If it is good, good. So these are things that we do need to maintain our physical body. So this is what of anything else, a karma. These are producing thoughts. Every single moment. When you talk, if you are 
angry, they produce certain thoughts, those are very harmful. Those are very harmful. And if you be happy, those also happiness produce also kind of you know the home among that changes immediately, then we can see your face are nice. Look. When people smile, why well, we like to see them. When a small baby smiles, we like to see it. It's a source of happiness. Source of energy. So the, when a person is angry, we do not like to look at the same person. It's just like uh, two sides of one coin. So always try to maintain your attitude. When you don't like somebody, don't try to change your mind. Just simply try to control. This is what we say, mindfulness. You don't need to be angry with them. It's not my problem, it is his problem. But I <coughs> should I take his problem to me as my problem. So these are the things. When we are unable to do these things, these are the things that causes us a lot of pain, sicknesses. So the karma is playing the most important role in designing our physical health. So if you are aware of this fact, if you know that it is doing harm, then who on earth will do that? I don't want to look ugly, I don't want to be tough, I don't want to be sick. So if you don't avoid these things, and rather avoiding that, if I just try to maintain calmness. But of course it takes time. The later we regret because our failure has caused me harm, and to the others too. So these are the things, so if we do not take necessary steps, if you are not aware of these things and if you do not put these things into practice, you are in great harm. Four things causes ill health to us. The first is the karma and every moment when you think of something, when you act something, it's happening each and every moment. And that will decide the fate of our here and hereafter. And we are so terrible. Why we try to do meditation and we try to be calm in everything? When you're calm person, when you try to sit calmly, the scientists have taken a picture of you when you are sitting calmly. Every one of us have produced a kind of rays, a light. Always. I am having now, you are having, we all are having around us. When we are in a good mood, in a happy mood, we can soar around there is a cycle of light. Peaceful, nice. The same very cycle you can see dark, ugly when we are in a bad, sad, angry mood. So these are doing harm. So they have taken pictures of us. When we are in a good mood, happy mood, calm mood, here is a picture, here is what is around your cycle of light. When you are angry, when you are unhappy, when you are aggressive, this is a picture that is taken when you are in such a mood. You yourself will not like to see that. So these are harmful. And these are things that will be said. So out of four causes, first is the karma. Karma is one of the four causes of nutrients for the sickness, health. 
It is good to be aware of that. In a way, we are why we are doing meditation and all these things. We are trying to control, pacify our way of thinking. Our way of thinking. Rather than just nourishing our thoughts, anger. If we try to pacify thought. When I see somebody, if I don't like him, let's finish. But later that comes, the person is gone, but the thought troubles me. Ah, I saw that guy, ah, but I won't, won't go even to the place that he is there, even the room that he takes, I don't go. You unnecessarily develops anger. And every single moment you think that you are doing great harm to you. That person is not, he has forgotten but but you, we, unnecessary develop, unnecessary thoughts. These are the very important things to be taken into consideration. If we do not do these things, then meditation, all these things. But I remember someone was asking me recently, what is the consciousness? And how it works? It's hard for me to understand dharma. I don't feel, I do not remember the four noble truths by heart. I do not eat for a path. I do not remember. Dharma is hard. I said, don't worry about four noble truths. Don't worry about eight for a path. Just try to be calm. Smile. You will be developing dharma, you will be up by the dharma, you will be practicing dharma. Dharma is not what is in the Tripitaka, in the books. It is here. What is the use of memorizing it for path, for number two, jhanas, consciousness, all this is. For me, it doesn't save us anything. If I do not apply, what is dharma, what we say, calmness, kindness, compassion, loving kindness, brotherhood, friendliness, all this thing, little by little, develop, that will help you to understand four number two, that will help you to understand the eightfold path. So it is important to know how the karma works. Every single moment, Choice daily, millions of thoughts. Every thought has the power to decide your destiny, has the power to decide your good health, has the power to decide your fate. So it's good whenever we are calm, position, reflect. When somebody is bothering you, you simply say to just only a thought, just let it go. Just forget about it. Don't worry about I want to learn Abhidhamma, I want to go this and that, learn, I want Abhidhamma, how many strikers, skills, how many thoughts, how many bad tops are coming. Forget about that. Because you are troubling yourself. Dharma has nothing to do with it. She is trying to be calm, smile, happy. When you look at somebody, wear a smile. That is the dharma. When somebody looks at you, if you look aside, you can understand how Backward we are. If somebody looks at me, if I cannot face him and have just a very smile, I have a long way to go. I have a long way to go. Because I am still to be civilized. Still to be civilized. Therefore, it is important to understand Every single moment, I am shaping my life. That's why 
we have been traveling so many millions and billions of years because I am preparing my life for the next life. But out of every day at the end of the day, if you say, if you look at it, whether I have reduced the period of time that I am going to live in the samsara, oh, I have prolonged it. If I have not been calm, quiet, friendly person, if you have not been a calmer person than yesterday, you have simply contributed for your long stay, long travel in the sunshine. So then you tell, oh, I must go and see the Dhamma, how it do it. Books will not help. It is in your hand. What you put it into practice is that is what decides our fate. So it's important to understand how karma causes sickness. So karma is that was I compared K, Kentucky in Kentucky wise. But K is karma out of four nutrients. First come the K is a karma. F Call it fried chicken. <laughs> we call it uh, food again. Kamma is one of the main causes of the sickness. Second one is the food that we discussed. Already a little bit we discussed about the food. Food for thought, food for physical. The three, three types of foods in the world. Omnivores, herbivores, and carnivores. Herbivores means those who consume what you call uh, <coughs> uh, 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 those who consume both vegetables and meat, if you want to say. Then Herbivores, only plants they eat. And carnivores, they only consume what you call uh, <coughs> uh, only meat. So you see there are animals who eat both plants and meat. There are animals who eat only plants. There are animals who eat only meat. So there are three types of food. These three types of food, <coughs> when <coughs> those who take meat and plants, they may not like other things, but in a the moderate, they eat meat and plants. But there are animals also, they eat only herbs. So there are animals who are vegetarian, and there are animals also who eat only meats. So out of this, <coughs> In the ancient time, in India, they were saying that what you put it into your mouth is more important than what you put out of your mouth. But there are some who, who said what you put into mouth is not very important. What you put out of your mouth is more important. These are more as certain truths. But you put it in your mouth, so you select what is to be eaten, what is good for health, what is bad for health, so you consume accordingly. But what you put out of mouth, that can also destroy the 
your society, family, your whole life. But that also has to be very careful. But that also can create a beautiful environment, a good society. Because what we put from our mouth out is good speech, good words, kind words, friendly words. If we fail to do that, we are invited just to curses from the mass. <laughs> so it's the best day is to use your mouth to good for the service of others so that it will be the best way for you to also avoid unnecessary ailments. There was a, <coughs> I said this, you know, there was a, a scientist in Montreal in Canada at the University of Montreal. He was doing kind of research. He selected two boys. One was very naughty, aggressive, always using abusive words, insulting others. But the other one was quite calm, peaceful, friendly. She so selected two plots of maybe about 50 feet wide, 100 feet long garden. And then the scientist <coughs> told these two boys, you take care of this and here is the barley seeds they planted. And the other boys also plant in barley seeds. Then you plant, you put fertilizer, plant, water it and take care of it. You must spend at least one hour. The both are doing it. And he also said, sometimes you talk to the plant and do it. Within a short period of <clears throat> three to four months time, the boy who was friendly, nicely, and talking calmly, a calm person, the body trees was planting, growing nicely with the flowers and bearing the fruits. No. That the boy is just naughty, aggressive, bad using, bad words, always angry. It's not growing. Just a few inches, not growing. What the, the scientist is trying to prove is when you have a positive attitude, gentle attitude, when you talk nicely to somebody, that produces the best results. Even the plant, the barley tree, bearing fruits and seeds. The one who was taking care of it and talking and planting and pouring water and taking care of that communication with the plant and the heart. It's a kind of heart-to-heart -heart communication. But the boy was aggressive, naughty, angry, in Polish. So, this speech is very important. You know, attitude is very important. That will change the everything in our life. So, it's good to think that, we, that uh, food has very important what we consume. And also it is very important what we put out of our mouth. When you talk to somebody in a friendly way, you create the atmosphere. And that will be very useful for, for the communication, for association and friendship. So it is what Buddha was saying is, Sama Vacha, a right speech, and when you talk nicely to others, you make others happy. You make others happy.
You are giving something to him. And in return you get it. I said this story also before. That was once the Buddha was out for begging Pindapada. Somebody appeared all of a sudden. He said to Buddha, Oh Lord Buddha, I'm so poor. I don't have anything to offer to you. I feel ashamed of myself. I have nothing to give to you. Buddha said, don't say it. You're not poor. He said, yes I am. No, you're not poor. And he said, how do you say I'm not poor? You have a mouth. Yes, he said. Talk nicely. Smile. When you talk nicely, when you smile, you are giving happiness to others. That is dana. Not this material form, but you are talking to somebody, you give the others happiness. You make others happy. You make others friendly. Just speak good words, happy words. Smile. You see how a smile can change? How a smile can change? A lot of things can be done. We are not aware of it. A young boy here in KL who is about 16 years old is living with his mother and father and mother separated but he won't stay with mother but father is taking care of studies everything and I asked him how is your relationship with your mother is good and yes but I don't talk to my mother. I said why? I don't know. I said, how come you stay at home without talking to your mother? Yes. How? He said that when you come across your mother, how do you see? I just close my face, I go like this. I said, don't be naughty. Your mother is dropping you to the school and mother is preparing food. And you still want to be aggressive, naughty, like this, through to your mother? How you can do that? I have been doing this sometimes. So what the mother says? She knows she's used to this, but she still keeps on doing her service to me. And in return, what you do? You just want to be rude to her. Are you doing the right thing? Are you not ashamed of this? Come on. He thinks, I told him to come a couple of days after. He came. One thing is good, because when he says come, he comes. The first thing when he comes to temple, he pays respect to Buddha, kneels down. Something that he has learned from the parents, that's also good. And I asked him, did he talk to him? No. I don't know how to start. I told him, when is your birthday? No. When is your mother's birthday? Ah, he's coming. What are you going to do? Ah, I don't know. Then I said, okay. You, on the birthday, what your mother likes the best? Eat. He told me kind of fruits. Fruits. I said, okay. You buy that and buy some flowers. Okay? Mm, I said, okay, I told him, I pay you. No, 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 he said, no, no. No, I pay you because you don't, no, no, I will buy you. You go, you go and on the birthday morning, you promise? Yes. You do the way I say? Yes, okay. Early in the morning, he wakes up, And he went to see the mother in the morning. Mother was surprised to see him standing. He took the flower and gave and gift and gave a hug. Mommy, forgive me. Happy birthday. I am back to normal. The relationship started. Just misguided by simply because of ignorance. Nobody was there. Just didn't want to talk to mother. 
a precious gift at home. Praise the Lord. These are things that we have to teach to our young boys and girls. <clears throat> Here we learn a lot of things. The young girl came with her husband and came to me and said, Tante, my mother died. Last few weeks I see I, my mother is completely burnt. I see her in front of me. Completely burnt, dark, ugly. I say, it was, no oh man, it's bothering me every day, every night I see and she's crying. What can I do? I did not want to say that your mother is in a bad shape, everything. I simply want to pay psychology. I told her maybe she is trying to make you more loving to her. So don't take it badly. Let us do something. Let us share meals with that. And she was sister, a river of tears falling, rolling down the eyes. And the boy was husband was trying to console her because one thing because she's crying now but failed to be enough good to mother has not been that much kind to the mother now coming after a great mistake a failure to do the duty to the parents was coming up this. It's not in Buddhist society, but in so-called <coughs> sorry, so-called Christian societies, other societies, they are <coughs> having this problem. Parents, children relationships are completely destroyed. And the whole family life has collapsed because these noble things we have failed to teach to the children. I don't see young girls and boys here. What happened? Parents come to the temple, Lord, listen, and you let them sleep. That is the failure of this. That is the failure of the parents. One girl who came and told me, Bhante, I want to share the marriage with my departed parents. Would you please come? I said, okay, I went with him. <coughs> Another monk, this young lady took us to the house, apartment, fancy apartment, and she told us to sit and she sat down. I look at, I don't see any preparation for dana or, the, or any sharing merits. He said, I want to share the merits. I didn't bring merits in my bag. I tried to explain to her what the merits, how to do it, why your parents need it. And she I saw certain, you know, this mask and a kind of uh, uh, deities, pictures, and thing, not even a Buddha statue. I explained to her. At that point, she started crying, crying, crying. And I let her cry a little bit. And she had this to say Bhante, I love my parents. But I will never forgive them for not teaching these valuable things to me. For not teaching. Even after they are gone, the children curse them because their parents have failed to do the needful. Failed to teach what is good and what is bad. These are the things that we have to take into consideration and encourage young boys and girls to get involved in good things. 
Once you are gone, there will not be even the children to sell merits. <laughs> because <laughs> you cannot count on them. So how we can? So these are the very important things that we have to think of. UGF, like any other society, is struggling to do the good. They are also taking part with the Buddha Dharma TV that we initiate in. UGF is going, and the president, and the present president, and others. They are taking, trying to cooperate with us to do these things. Of course, you are part of that. <laughs> but all these things, before we expand to the world, let us fix everything at home. Let us fix everything at home. If your children are okay, if your children are following the path of the parents, then you can be very happy. It's not the world, but first, Atanameva Patamam Buddha said, first you, you mean the family. Teach your children, growing children, what is good, what is bad, how to live a better, peaceful, joyful, happy life, how you respect your parents, how you respect your elders. These are the noble qualities. This is what the West and Europe, they say, from the East, we do not want anything, just give us the Sigalu or the Sutta that teaches the values, how you respect your elders, parents, brothers, sisters, teachers, how you create a peaceful, joyful family. So it is important to understand, simply because we are just feeding Physical, but no feeding also the food for the mind. This is what come on, and if you do not properly feed the food, proper food, not a physical body, but for the mind, and then this will be a cause of your sicknesses. Third, it's a climate. Climate is very important deciding our lower life, health, everything. This is Buddha, this is Siddhartha, when he went to the forest, he is going deep, deep, deep into the forest, far away from the society. Why? Everything we find there, isolated, a calmness, happiness. All the climate, the weather, everything is very important for our health. Here we breathe always a polluted air. So it's good. <clears throat> low life is for the low life, good health, we need to breathe good health. Now you go to India. I remember <clears throat> One of the oldest monks in the world, in Sri Lanka, anyone knows his name, Bhante Ananda Maitri. He died at the age of 106. At the age of 103, he was interviewed by a journalist in Sri Lanka. Journalist posed the question, you are venerable now 103. When do you think, um, if I want, I can live. One or three, then said, Perhaps, uh, may I come when you become one or four to interviews? Mm, mm, okay, you can interview me, I will be there one or four. He came into one or four. And one or four, he again questioned this chief, venerable. He said, I am going to live on one or five. Stage 105, he interviewed this venerable. Then he asked, Now I have been interviewing every year, now you are 105. I said, Well, you know, there's no point of you know that now I'm 105, maybe I'll live at the age of 106. I happen to 
meet this venerable asset at the monastery with another couple of monks. I went, I paid my respect to and I refused. Sitting on the ground and asking, I wanted to ask, her, ask, ask him, Venerable Sir, I'd like to. <coughs> I, I, I like to, I like to ask question, if you permit. Uh, yes, he said, uh, now you are 105, you have said that you are living at the age of 106. Yes. Can you please tell us uh, something, a miracles thing? Then, uh, okay. First he said that, you know, you are fortunate because you can see senior monks. You can worship Sangha monks. But I am the oldest. I am looking for elder monks that I want to find a living elder monk whom I want to pay my respect. But I don't find in the world. That worries me very much. I don't find a senior monk in the world more senior than me. I really am looking for in Thailand, I don't find, not in Myanmar, I don't find. I really feel that. And uh, he felt, of course, he was the senior, most senior monk. So it's a great blessing for us to pay him respect. Then when we asked, I kept on asking, Venerable, what is the, the wonderful thing that you have seen? Then he said, <clears throat> I was in uh, near Himalaya. I walked into the Himalaya one day. Early morning I left. And I'm going through the bushes, east, nobody, and going. And I, all of a sudden I noticed somebody sitting under a tree. A yogi with long hair, beard and sitting. And this venerable could communicate in Sanskrit, great master. He was asking that, that yogi he saw sitting under a tree. Yogi was also surprised to see him. Then this venerable was going to introduce him I am sorry. Yogi said, No Venerable, I know your name, you are coming from here, here, there, this go. Ah. He knew. Then Venerable said, He wanted to sit. He asked him to sit, of course, on the ground, they sat. The Yogi said, Venerable, you look tired. May I offer you something to drink? Then the Venerable said, uh, I don't see anything, it's okay, but I can ask, if you like, the fruit juice or the milk or anything, water. He said that would be good as a, a milk. All of a sudden, this yogi formed into a, a smoke like this, that is smoked and turned to into the tree tree. This is the story from this great monk. Um, and here in a minute he's coming with a glass of milk and sat. Then I asked him, Venerable, it's hard to believe this, how this happens. If you know the Dhamma, it's a simple thing. If you know the science, it's a simple thing. This body can convert into steam. This is how the yogis and others, even the Buddha, when he was entering through the rocks, converts first this is into the formless, and that steam goes into it. And that's how this yogi did it. For me, it was not a Surprise thing, but it happened. And then, after talking, talking, I was, he wanted to know how old is he. 
This was a story 850 years. Can you imagine? You may think in these are fairy tales. 850 years. And that was the latest, the, the what you call, the, the report about the oldest yogi in India was about two, almost 100 years ago. That was a 250 years old yogi died at the age. He was living 250. Even now, living yogis are there in Varanasi and other places, 127, 128, few yogis. This is something that comes under your control, under our control too. It is all depends on the breath. Now you see human beings, we, breathe in and out. How many times in a minute? 12 to 18 times, within 20, 12 to 18 times, that's a human being. Breathe in and eight. In a minute we do either from 12 to 18 in between. So we live 100 years. What's about the dogs? They breathe from 25 to 100 times in a minute. Shortly. Short life. Now turtles. How many? From one to six, breathe in and out in a minute. They live 200 years, 300 years. Breath control. Breath control. Now, the yogis who are doing prana yoga, pranayam, prana means life, yoga means method, method of prolonging life. When we are able to, if we can breathe in and out six times a minute, because when we take a long breath, and when we let it go, when we take a long breath, we, what you call, uh, oxygen. We get good oxygen. When we have a long breath and let it go, carbon dioxide. So when we have a control of our breath, that prolong the life, not a short breath, and that also reduces when you are able to take a long breath and let it go. When you take a long breath in, oxygen, and oxygen will help you to purify your blood and also reduce your slowly the pressure level, tension. So these are the techniques that develop control in the mind, the functions of the mind, and then prolong the life. For us ordinary people, it's how we can expect. But yogis who do this kind of thing, Buddhas, it's good. So it's good sometimes, from time to time. Why this yogi is controlled? Close your one side nose and take a long breath, hold it, and let it go. You get a good ex oxygen, and that will purify your blood. And more you do that, more it help you to purify your blood and reduce your what you call tension and pressure. So this is this has to happen regularly but in a normal way. So those who are doing that, the longevity is not a problem or a question. So if we do not properly maintain this also, the AI is very important. So when you go once in a while, why people are rushing to the mountain somewhere and take a little bit breath, breathe good, breathe good health, good air, because intoxicated these things. So it's good to go and from time to time, once you go to mountains or the place, just try to close and take a long breath. 
that car. You get oxygen, you draw carbon dioxide, and that will also help you to prolong. So those who are doing that pran yoga and everything will live longer than the, we expect 100 years and say, it's nothing for them. So it's good to know this. So if, so the climate is very important. So the climate can also cause disease. So first it is the karma, then it is the food, then it is the climate, the last come M, not magnolia, but mind. That is very important. If you try to take your mind under control, this has, sometimes you must have heard, ah, oh, it's difficult, but we do not know how to apply it. If you do not know how to apply it, then of course we are going to be always in trouble. It is good to be aware of whether I am, when anger comes, try to stay a little bit. Don't write away answer. Because when you are in a bad mood, angry mood, when you let your mind to control you, when you speak, that will be very harsh, bad, ugly words that we call reacting. But if we know how to, instead of reacting, to respond, a bright, a nice, an intelligent way, how to react when you negotiate, when you re interact with the people in the society, in the family, we should know how to respond rather than reacting. I give this very often example. When you see a dog, you throw a stone to a dog, he will run after it and bite, bite and he will bleed it. But if you throw the same stone to a lion, what the lion will do? He will not run after this stone, he will simply raise the head and look from where this came. He goes after the one who threw it, but not going after the stone. See the dogs reacting, but the lion responding. This is the So we should learn not to react, but to respond under any circumstances, then the family life will be good, social life will be good, a day-to-day -day life will be full of joy and happiness because I am responding, not reacting. Even somebody yells at me, smile at you. Because nobody can make you angry, but it is you can make angry or happy. It depends how you take things, how you take things, how you respond to the things. Therefore, these are the things that we have to be aware. If you know how karma is doing harm to me, but karma is always not the reason, you can also control karma. Then, food. Karma can make you sick, eternal sick. But food also can eternally make you sick, but in moderation. Once King Kosala came to Buddha after meal, and he was staying and snoring, sitting in front of the Buddha. The Buddha said, Matta nyuta ca bhattasmi. Be aware of the amount of food that you are consuming. Eat in moderation. Those who do eat in moderation, they will not be easily sick. Less eating will never make anyone sick, but more eating will make always everyone sick. So it is up to us how we handle the food, how we consume them is in our hand. Kama and the food and then the climate. 
sometimes good to go out and breathe in, breathe out, good weather. Those are the third one is causing sickness. The fourth one is the mind. Mind, we talk about mind, oh, mind, mind. No. Don't think that I want to know what is Abhidhamma to control my mind. No. Forget about that. Simple technique is just try to smile, just try to communicate with others friendly way, look at others with a friendly way. So that when you look at others, if they feel that this is a nice guy, good. So that's how we have to handle things, control our mind, observe things, ob observe yourself. These are not very difficult. I'm not asking you to go and read this and ask the look at the commentaries, what they say. No, don't. These are not very much relevant to this our problem. Learn knowledge of Dhamma is good, but what is what you know a little bit, put it into practice. People like to listen to Dhamma talk hours and hours and hours. I'm just coming from Batugaja. I was talking two and half hours, two hours and half, thirty minutes. Night. Then I said I'm also <coughs> a little bit half. No, no, a little bit more. Continued another for 15 minutes. But then I asked, and then, is there anybody? Please raise hand those who are meditating. Only one person. I said, there is no use of listening to Dhamma talk if you don't put it into practice. I told them, if you listen to keep on listening, listening, if you don't put it into practice, Dhamma, then there is no point. I'm encouraging all of you to practice something very simple thing. We talk about meditation and thing. I am in, now teaching people to do something, a very easy thing. Because Buddha said, Vina kaya bhavana chitta bhavana natiti. Without physical concentration, there is no mental concentration. So it is important that you should know, we should know how to control our physical body. Our physical body, how to control, that is very important. Now I'm teaching you. I, when Brother Robert asked me, I told them, not, I don't need to talk so much. I want to train them something. Fortunately, I am left with only <laughs> 10 minutes now. but. I want to show you something. Please try to practice this and teach everyone that you know. It is a very simple technique. It's not invented by me, it is the Buddha's. Before you <coughs> talk about this uh, vipassana, samatha, all these things, just try to sit, keep your body straight. Keep your legs tight, hands, <coughs> without moving your hands or legs or without blinking, without bending your body or without stretching or scratching. Just try to sit, just like a statue, not even a bit. Don't move your body, physical body hands, fingers, anything, just try to sit as just like a statue for five minutes. When you can sit for five minutes, but don't even bend a little bit of your physical body or stretch your hand, don't scratch anything, just like a statue. Stay for five minutes, observe. Oh, if there's any pain or anything, no. I don't move my hands, I don't open my eyes, no blinking, no scratching, no stretching. Just stay five minutes. Continue to do that. Continue to do that. Even a mosquito bites, don't answer. Don't go after it. Just sit 
five minutes without moving, without blinking, without that. Now you are training your physical body. You are training your physical body. If you are unable to keep your body five minutes without any motion, without any motion, if you are unable to do that, you will not be able to move forward doing meditation. This is the basic thing. Do this daily. You can do this daily for five minutes. If you are able to do that for five minutes, please do it for ten minutes. You are doing a, a great progress. If you can sit five minutes without moving, what is important is, please look at the statue. There's no movement whatsoever. You must sit like a statue. Don't move at all and keep your body straight. Not even a bit of changing. Your direction, your, the way you stay and no blinking, no stretching, no scratching. Just stay as it is, just like a statue for five minutes. Do it whenever time permits you. You can do that, continue to do that. That will bring you calmness, physical calmness. That will also change slowly your attitude. Aggressivity will be reduced. And your circulation of blood will be also done properly. Attention will be reduced and pressure will be come normal and just try to do that uh, few minutes every day few mi five minutes if it is more that's better but I what I say five minutes because many people say I cannot do meditation I cannot just do this just try to sit for five minutes just try to sit for five minutes without moving, just like a statue. Just like a statue, you stay that five minutes. Whenever you are trying, whenever you are angry, just go and sit for five minutes. Don't move, just like a statue. You are controlling, you are controlling your tension, you are controlling your pressure, that blood circulation will be regularly done properly established and you reduce your pressure attention will be reduced you will become a person and then we go back to next level later do this for five minutes every day ten minutes or five minutes whenever more the better do this for one month every day you will see a different person. I'm different from last week. I'm different from today. I'm different. I will be different yesterday. People around will notice. Oh, you look calmer. You look nice, calm, peaceful. This is what we need to do. More than reading ten books, whole Tripitaka, just take one minute. Think of it and do this meditation daily, daily, daily. More you do, later you will be liking the learning of Buddha's teaching because you are experiencing Buddha's teaching. What is in the book you are experiencing here? Calmness, calm. We talk about calmness. Here, calmness you feel in physical body. Your muscles are getting less, less aggressive. Your thoughts, your talking, your movement will be reduced to a level of a decent level. Aggressivity will be disappearing and you will become a person. Your regard will be also quite appealing. All these things not coming from outside, within yourself. Do this every day. Five minutes the minimum, but don't limit to five minutes. More you do, more you will be happier, more you will be calmer, more you will be less tension. So this is what we need in this teaching. So 
if you have any question, if, if Ms. Robert permits, if anybody can ask any question, because uh, time is okay, the given time. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Your last talk about this sitting like a uh, bante. You are talking about sitting like a statue, okay? Yes. And uh, in the meantime, how do you cope with your monkey mind? Monkey mind? That's now, because you word. sit very really? quiet, yes. so how do you deal with... Yes. Now, you see, just like a <clears throat> wild bull, you're trying to control wild bull, your mi mind is more wilder than the bull. <laughs> you try to get a rope and slowly pull, 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 pull out. In the same way, when you try to sit, yeah, you feel like stretching your legs. You say, no. This is the conflict between mind and physical body. Now, rather than you answer, you try, rather than you try to be manipulated by your mind, you try to manipulate your mind. You don't do what the mind wants, you do what you want. Now you want, you feel like stretching your legs. I said, no, I don't. I don't. It is just is what the control comes. Your physical, this is not something, but this, what we call anything that hurts, anything that disturbs, we call Mara. Mara is not somebody who has 10 legs and 20 hands. No. Those, these feelings, these are things that harass you. But you say, no. I take under my control. I feel like there's, I feel like scratching. But I said, no, it hurts, but I still keep. But beginning, it is difficult. But once you do, once or two times, you are the winner. Nobody can control. You try to control. That is what is. So must take control of your mind. Yes. Put an effort to control yes. your mind. Yes. You see. So Thank it is, you. When you do that, when you feel that you don't, no, don't give up. I don't give up under pressure. In the same way, there is something. Body is telling me, yo, oh, stretch your legs. I say, no, I don't. This is, if you want to answer this and that, you will never be able to, because so many calls come. So this is what, take under control. When you do that, when you are able to do that, when you are able to do five minutes, or oh, a great success. When you feel that, then you feel. You don't need to go and open what is next. Do this. It will guide you. So, Pante, one more question. How do you relate this with puja, with chanting? So, how, how, what is the relationship? Does chanting also able to do this type of uh, yes, ability? Yes, you see that uh, uh, when we teach to the small kids, how to walk, we told him, no, oh, do and that's it. But those, we are not used to this kind of thing. If somebody asks a kid, small kid, please, do this, that loss. But we teach them how to talk, talk, kane, kane, little by little, but surely in the same way, slowly, surely, because we cannot go straight to that. But sir, we cannot go to the first floor or second floor without passing the first floor. So these are things that we have to do slowly but surely, little by little, little by little. So this is the, the stage one. Yeah, chanting, chanting is a is, stage, chanting, stage two. Yeah, chanting oh. is, is something you see that. Chanting is a, why people now try to chant in a melody. Because it's nice to ears, right? And so when they say, now for example, that uh, I see sometimes the chanting in a different beautiful way, and just chanting. So we get lost in the voice. But the spiritual aspect of it is sometimes to some extent gone. That's why Buddha, Ma Gita Serena, Buddha said, don't chant in a melodic way. You may get attached yes, to yes. it. So it's the meaning. So, but it's helped, you know. We, we, rather than going and sitting in front of Buddha, we look at the Buddha and we slowly calm down and pay homage. And these things are very helpful to somebody. 
But those things are not really the must because Buddha has advised one monk who came there and looking at Buddha, he said, Kinti vakkali mina kuti kaina ditte ne dhamme ne yoko vakkali dhammam pa somam pa vakkali. What is the use of looking at this dying, decaying, impermanent body? Go and practice dhamma, one who practices dhamma, so man passeth. If you want to see me, see my dhamma. As we talk about calmness, we to go and see the uh, Majjim Nikaya, Nikaya, they said, okay, when you do the calmness, calm, and you, okay, then you keep in mind calmness, so I want to get the calmness. Misguided sometimes. Just, no, oh, you will see that this is a feeling. When you're hungry, you eat. When you're thirsty, <coughs> you <coughs> so you drink, but the thirst will disappear. You don't need to ask. How it happens, we don't need. But what is important, it has happened. So the same way when you practice, the calmness will come, you will feel that. More you do that, more you feel it. Once you get used to the, 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 the channel, you will never retreat, you will never go back. Oh. Thank you, Bhante. Yes. <coughs> yes. Anybody else? <coughs> Any, anyone else? Okay, then. But, uh, but is it okay to uh, uh, encourage to practice pranayama? Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that is a yoga, yoga. <laughs> that, that uh, <clears throat> of course, <clears throat> that uh, I practice for myself, but I don't uh, haven't teach been a teacher, yoga teacher. But uh, here and there, it's, it's good to. The yoga is a, is a, I like chanting. Yoga is another way of method of getting into deep meditation, right? Now, we, yoga is not simply stretching hands and legs. Tai Chi, this is Tai Chi, tai chi. Karate, Kung Fu, it started at the temple. Mm. Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Karate started at the temple. In the ancient times, Monks in the monastery in China, they are meditating, meditating, meditating. <coughs> and then, of course, they need to stretch their legs hours and hours. They go out little. Or they go out a little bit, walking like this, stretching legs, this, and they walk slowly, like this, without losing the concentration. People in the street, those who are not familiar, they come and pass by us, they push monks. The monks, they do not get upset, they do not react, but they do the same energy level concentration, they do this. Push. Tai Chi. Yeah. That is Dura, <laughs> Kung Fu, Karate. That is a mind power. So this is the origin of Tai Chi meditation, all this in the temple. The origin of Karate, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, all from the temple. So the, without losing the concentration, the meditation, the, the, the power of mind is flows, put on the ground. <laughs> so that is the power of the, the what you call, the, the concentration. So it's good to practice these things, then later, of course, you also will be able to do that, the power of mind, of mind. And the same way, chanting, why you uh, chant here and give word to others, the power of words. You cannot chant if you lie, if you gossip. So it is powerful when you have pure words. If you don't use abusive words, cannot. 
If you use the words, abusive words, you cannot, if you do all this practice, precepts and good words, the words has a power, healing power, energy. So chanting is that. So that's why when you chant from the monk and those who avoid uh, um, what you call false speech and uh, vain words and always chanting, that has a power. These are all techniques. These yeah. are all techniques. Yeah, yes. So they say that uh, uh, Japanese master, I said this here before also one time, uh, a Zen master, <coughs> uh, Japanese uh, uh, psychologist, he wanted to test the power of the words. They brought a bowl of water from Fujimut. They got about 12, 12 bowls of water from Fuji Mountain. And they said, this water is not good to drink. Eh? It's not good to drink. Then they tested in 14 or 12 labs. All said this water is contaminated, no good to be used, can't drink. Then they gave this water to the temple, the monastery. They chanted, they chanted, they chanted, and gave back to the laboratory. They tested. This water is now okay, not contaminated, you can drink. That's a speech, words. That's what it's about.